Welcome to this Windows Server Basics video. In these videos, we go over basic concepts related to the administration of Windows Server. In this video, we're going to talk about security group scopes and the scenarios in which you would use them. You use security groups to assign permissions to resources such as files, folders, and shared printers within the Active Directory environment. Security groups allow you to control who can access resources, such as shared folders or applications. These groups can be used with access control lists to grant permissions to a resource. For example, if you want to grant a set of users read access to a shared folder, you would add the users to the group and then assign the permissions to the security group. Assigning rights and permissions to groups rather than individual user accounts is a best practice because it simplifies administration. Managing permissions for a group allows administrators to add or remove users from a group to apply or revoke access across multiple resources, rather than adjusting permissions for each user individually at the resource level. There are three group scopes that define how far the permissions and memberships of a group can apply within a domain or forest. There are also computer local groups that only have the scope of the local computer. The three scopes are domain local groups, global groups, and universal groups. Let's start with domain local groups. Domain local groups can contain user accounts, global groups, and universal groups from any domain within the forest or from trusted external domains. Additionally, they can include domain local groups from the same domain, but not from other domains. Computer accounts from any domain in the forest or from trusted external domains can also be added to domain local groups. However, domain local groups can only be granted permissions on resources within the domain where the group exists. They are best suited for managing resource access within the domain, such as file permissions, but can include members from outside the domain. For example, you can add users from other domains to a domain local group and then use that group to grant access to a shared folder within your local domain. Next, let's look at global groups. Global groups can contain users, groups, and computers only from the domain in which the group was created. However, they can be used to grant access to resources in any domain in the forest or in trusted external domains. Global groups are often used to group users who have similar job functions. Global groups are useful for managing memberships that span multiple domains. For example, you might create a global group called HR Global that contains all users in the HR department. This group can then be given access to resources in other domains within the forest. The final group scope that we will discuss is universal groups. Universal groups can contain users, groups, and computers from any domain within the forest. Universal groups can be used to assign permissions to resources in any domain in the forest. Universal groups are often used to group users who require access to resources across multiple domains within the forest. Universal groups are replicated to the global catalog, which can impact replication performance if not managed properly. For example, you might create a universal group called All Managers, which includes managers from different domains and that you can use to grant access to resources across the entire forest. Now let's summarize the differences between these security group scopes in Active Directory environments. Domain local groups are best for granting resource access within a domain, but can include members from other domains. Global groups are great for grouping members from the same domain, but can be used to grant access across the forest. Universal groups can group members from any domain and can assign permissions across the forest. Security group scopes allow for flexible management of access and permissions in active directory environments, depending on the needs and structure of the organization.